So my name is Petra McPherson. I'm 20 years old right now and I'm going to Emily Griffith's video production and editing program. Hello everybody, I am Marguerite Avarius. I am at Emily Griffith Technical College and I'm just currently studying video production and editing. I am Brandon Islas. Um, I have two last names, Islas Rivera, but I usually go by Brandon Islas since it's a lot shorter and people don't get confused as much. And um, I, I'm currently going to Emily Griffith Technical College for video production and editing. I, am, I don't have a job right now, I'm just going to school, so like, school is the priority. I've always been interested in movies and things like that, and I've always wanted to know what went into the production of movies, making movies, just like the technicalities, because you go and you see movies and it's like, I don't know, there's obviously a lot that goes into it. So I always wanted to know the process and all that. Plugins that our instructor Troy showed us, which was so there's no textbooks in our class, so all of it is just us grabbing a camera, a tripod, mics, so we're gonna talk. and just going somewhere and shooting something. A lot of the hands-on learning that we do in the program at Emily Griffith is just a lot of filming, your own stuff, uh, scripting, editing, producing, coordinating, whatever project it is that you have. First week, Sean was like, okay, here's a camera, like, go, go film some stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, but um, it's been really, it's like, it's a lot easier because you learn faster that way and you remember things that way. And you just like, you get, you get a lot of experience and you get a lot of confidence in yourself. So you're always taught that you learn things by either seeing someone do it, doing it, or reading about how to do it. And I think experiential, it kind of excludes the reading because we don't really read any textbooks or how to do anything. But the other two, yes, like we always see our teacher Sean do something and then he'll teach us. So, and then by doing it ourselves over and over again, it sticks to our brain. So that way we learn better than if we were just to read it off a book and be like, okay, I think I know what I'm doing. So experiential learning, hands-on experience is always the best way to learn something. It feels, it feels great. It's like a job almost. So I think that's the whole point of this, to feel like a job. And I took the advantage of having a school that would give me knowledge, experience, not just by reading a book, but by actually going out there and filming and interviewing yeah. and working with students on big projects. And that, that would give me an edge on the workforce over other competitors. Well, I was a bit shaky. We've learned a lot about different programs we use for editing and different Photoshop programs and After Effects and we've learned how to um, use a camera, how to white balance a camera, how to use a tripod. The rule of thirds is a huge thing. I really love the rule of thirds. I've gotten good at interviews. I've learned how to operate a camera, a tripod, a mic. I've learned how to operate the TriCaster. I've learn how to be a floor director and a camera person or an audio person. I've, I don't know, I've actually learned a lot in this program. How to do live production with the TriCaster and um, how to make virtual sets and how to approach a, a company and what it wants. So if a company wants a video about a specific thing, then I'll accommodate for that or for whatever it is that they want. And uh, white shots just used like one only at Emily Griffith Technical High uh, College. Um, one of the biggest things getting in my way, I think, is my anxiety. I have a, I have a lot of anxiety about being around people, a lot of social anxiety. So I think that's definitely going to hinder me when looking for a job and things like that. Um, I think a lot of that stemmed from um, losing my dad when I was ten because. My brother, he, he was older and he would always go out and stuff and hang out with his friends. My mom would um, be at work all the time, so I stayed home with my little sister and I think that um, I lack a lot of the social qualities that I think you need in this kind of industry. The problem that gets the beginning of my way lately is just putting a lot of time into one thing since I get distracted easily and I just, I can't stand being sitting down 
in one session for a very long time. I have to do something else. I just feel like myself is my biggest obstacle, but I've done a really good job of not letting myself get in the way of going to school and stuff. One of the obstacles that I kind of face about more than 90% of the day would be having transportation to get here, and that would be the RTD, which I take. And it's a lot harder than it seems since I live pretty far away from Emily Griffith since it's on 9th and uh, Grant. And I live all the way up to Colfax and North Fork, and that's about an hour and 30 minutes or so, depending on the bus driver and traffic. And that's, um, I have to wake up super early for that. So then if I miss it, that's just another like 30 minutes waiting. And then not only that, going home, I have to take a specific bus to get home. It only comes, I think, every once an hour or so. So I usually just kind of like try to prepare ahead and like leave the class as soon as possible. It was hard at the beginning to actually build up the courage to like to take the program and to do it because last year I like I heard about it last year and um, I decided to wait another year before doing it because I was scared and so I ended up coming this year and I was like I, I just knew that if I didn't come and if I didn't try it then I would regret it again so I just like did it and it's been really great and here I am. Sometimes getting to school is, is a struggle because sometimes sometimes I didn't have like any bus fare to come at all so it's just like crap you know like and I don't know just just getting to school and also because of my mother, I don't know, just like sometimes she needs me there and with her condition, I can't exactly say no all the time, you know. I finished high school and then I took six months off and then I did one year at Front Range at Community College and then I took another six months off and it just seemed like I wasn't able to find what I wanted to do and it was like it's scary because you're like I have to start my life now you know and so before this program I was just working and not knowing what I was doing with my life. High school is not for everybody and it definitely wasn't for me. <laughs> I got tired of that stuff real quick. Um, but let's see so when I started this program the video production I also was going to GD classes in the morning the same GD program with some of the same teachers and some of the same people you know and so I only had two tests to left to take out of the four and I got that done pretty quickly because you know like um, I actually like showed up every day I did my work all the time I actually was putting effort into this so I was able to get two tests done in just like less than four months so I kind of wish I did that on my first year there you know that would have been better but eh, you live and you learn. I used to work full-time and now I moved to part-time because of school and um so far, it's been pretty good. My morning routine, okay, so I wake up, I turn my alarm off, I hate life for like two minutes, because you know, I'm freaking tired, and I don't even wake up that early, like, I don't know why it's such a struggle for me to wake up, like, I wake up at nine, like, sometimes when I wake up, I'll go back to sleep for another hour, because I'm so lazy, like, oh my god, I need to get rid of that habit, but, so, okay, so sometimes I'll wake up and go back to sleep, but regardless if I don't or if I do, once I fully wake up, I'll go to the bathroom, do my makeup, <laughs> and just make sure I look pretty. Sometimes I don't care, so I won't do it, but most of the time I do, like 99% of the time I do. After I do that, I'll, I'll go eat breakfast, get dressed, get my stuff ready for school, get a lunch ready for school if I need to, most of the time I do, and just chill. I usually like having half an hour to an hour to just for myself before I go to the bus stop or get a ride to school. And just I'm just on my phone too, just like, oh, Facebook, haha, <laughs> funny post, memes, oh, look, I have to go to the bus, and that's it, honestly, so. When I came in, all I knew what to do was just uh, edit, that's it. I didn't really know how to do camera work. I mean, if you put a, if, before coming into this class, if you put a camera in my hand, I would just, know the basics already like medium and wide shots and stuff like that and tight shots and probably just a rule of thirds that's about it that's all i would have known but coming in to this program now i know how to film i know how to edit better in premiere and in after effects i know a lot of stuff honestly like this program does teach you a lot like also script writing and the whole work for yourself thing and just uh, having to create our own YouTube channel to like make shorts every week. 
it's it's pretty cool, honestly. Like I have learned a lot since I've started. <laughs> like I, I knew how to like point a camera and like film a thing and I knew about I knew about match action. I guess that's the extent of what I knew, but now after being in the program it's like I know everything that goes into making a video and making it good and so that's pretty cool. I gained a lot of confidence more so than I uh, had before because you have to really go out there and talk to people and kind of not be shy about it and tell them straight up like hey you know can you fix your shirt or hey can you dress a little more nicely can you do this for me because if you, if you don't tell them what to do then your product um, the film at the end it's not going to look, look as good and that's going to be kind of your own problem because you you didn't decide to step up and say hey I'm here to help you so you so if you help me this product for your company will look twice as better and that's kind of what a lot of uh, interaction comes with it's just putting your foot in front of the door and saying hey you know we need to cooperate better it's just skills it's just teaching me everything that I need to know to be a good video editor when I graduate it's just like it's like putting me in a machine and like doing all these things while I'm in the machine and I, I come out of the machine like a completely different person. That's, that's, just, that's just what it is. Honestly, I think I got a little, over too, a little over my head coming into this program, especially with my instructor Sean, you know, telling me all these great things I could become and like him telling us what he has done and it just like I said, I just got ahead of myself and I started thinking like, oh, I could be the same. But then again, that's not impossible. I could, you know, do the things that he did and I kind of plan on to. Honestly, I think what I really want, and I thought about this for a long time, I kind of want to work for the news here in Denver at some point in my future. I really hope to get that out, you know, at some point, you know, after this program. But if not, I just, I just want a good job, you know, I just want to be able to save up and buy myself a car. I need a car. I'm an adult. Like, you know, struggles. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of experience um, in the film industry and what it takes to work in this job market. Um, you have to learn a lot of different things. You can't just be, you can be good at one thing, but if you're better at all the things, as much as you are able to be, it's a lot more of a boost for when people are looking at your resume and saying, oh, hey, you know, he doesn't know how to just film, but this guy knows how to edit, he knows how to do visual effects, he knows how to write a script, he knows how to do everything. He's a one-man army, and we can count on him for about everything. I do see myself just getting a job with somewhere, with some company. I don't know who exactly. I don't know where. It'll be somewhere in Colorado, hopefully, but I'll just be working and editing with them and then hopefully, you know, moving up in the industry building my reputation because like I said I really kind of want to work for the news and to get from wherever the hell I'm going to be to Denver is going to be a lot of work so I'm just going to be just striving and surviving. <laughs> the rhymes. Next couple of years I see myself working for more for a company than having my own. The next couple of years I hope to be working at a news station or something similar to that. I mean realistically that's where I would like to work but my big dream always has been to be a movie maker, so hopefully I'll be at least doing like little films on the side or something because I know how to shoot and I know how to produce and I know how to edit and um, so hopefully hopefully I'll be doing both, honestly. I mean, I need to get a job, obviously, and whatnot, but I'm hoping to be able to pursue the things that I enjoy, which is editing and, I don't know, filmmaking. Oh, you're filming me already? Okay. I think some of the challenges that we're going to face after we get out this program is I think just trying to find a, a good job somewhere and just start your career and build yourself from there. Um, I think I don't, I'm not entirely sure how hard it is and how long it'll take me specifically to get a job, but I think that might be just a challenge is just getting it and then working my way to the top eventually. In this program, I am just another student trying to, I'm just like you guys. I'm just trying to, you know, become good at this and make this a profession because I really want to work in this field for the rest of my life. So here, I'm just a student 
with a lot of passion for video editing and I really hope to get a good career out of it and just grow, you know, just that's who I am. I'm just that student who really wants a future, you know, and will commit to it, so. So breaking news guys, El Chapo was found at Casa Bonita today. He was found ordering a fajita when the police officers came up to him and asked him his real identity and which he revealed he was El Chapo. Soon afterwards was arrested on the spot and then taken to the Denver County Jail.